Hey everybody, welcome to another ASMR vlog. Um, I didn't do one last week simply because I didn't really have anything to chat about, um, nothing too major. So I thought I'll leave it for a week and come back when there's some more stuff to talk about. And um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things today, as you can probably tell by the title. Uh, first one is Star Wars. Um, we've seen the uh, release of the trailer for um, Battlefield 2. Is that right? Battlefield 2, yeah, that's right. Um, it confuses me because there was already Battlefields, but yeah, okay. Um, and we've also seen stuff about the next instalment in the um, kind of next trilogy of films starting with the force awakens we've seen some stuff about the last jedi so all in all uh it's been a star warsy week i guess because of the whole celebration event as well which they have annually um and the second thing i want to talk about is project scorpio which is the next microsoft console so the next xbox console basically um we'll start off with star wars because uh the stuff about scorpio is going to get a little bit nerdy so if you're not into specs and things like that then maybe it won't be for you but most people generally like star wars i find so we'll go into that now um as i said we're battlefield 2 saw a release trailer this time they're putting in a single player campaign which was sorely lacking from the uh last battlefield star wars battlefield game they did um I didn't play that one simply because I'm generally not into the whole competitive um, deathmatch shooter. It, it didn't really grab me, and I think it was a little bit shallow, is what I heard a lot of people say. Aesthetically, absolutely stunning, and probably pretty good fun just run around in for half an hour, an hour, but um, I think I was probably engrossed in Fallout 4 at that time. I can't remember when that came out, though, actually, to be completely honest. Um, but um, I do love Star Wars most people do I understand that um, now I love Star Wars games as well the unfortunate thing is that for most of you who probably um, are under the age of maybe 25 you probably don't know about the heyday of Star Wars games um, the last sort of 10 years have been a real kind of barren patch sure we've had battlefield um, we've had a few other things which are okay and they were generally all okay but back in the kind of early 2000s and late 90s we had some really good games um, come out we had um, the whole kind of x-wing series uh, which were just fantastic kind of mind-blowing um, like space flight simulators for their time really good um, cool story featured like loads of cool Star Wars things and you got to fly an X-Wing um, or in the sequels you got to fly TIE Fighters and, and all sorts of things basically fantastic games um, and really kind of like set the tone for what was to come um, we had some really cool Jedi Knight games which were mind-blowing for the time as well we had dark forces which was the first one which was really good i remember playing that when i was a kid probably was about 14 or 15 um so we're talking about 20 years ago now and just being kind of blown away by that i remember playing it over a summer with a friend of mine and we, we completed the whole game back when we had like summer holidays and um it was so good and then it had like sequels like jedi knight and jedi academy which were just really good and great stories and you got to use Jedi powers and stuff which is just amazing and the lightsabers weren't bad either so um, cool games and then came the KOTOR series which um, probably most people have heard about like everybody raves about the KOTOR series but probably you know I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people haven't actually played that because they were really like original Xbox PlayStation 2 games you can get them on PC as well um, and I actually generally recommend you even play those games nowadays if you're really into Star Wars they are so good um, they are so the lore is so deep in them it, they're really interesting stories and 
just really solid games as well and um, the fact that you can kind of choose to go down the light or dark side and everything that comes with that it's kind of mass effect before mass effect essentially um, but um, you know in star wars universe which is obviously super cool and um, they were i think the pinnacle of star wars games in my opinion anyway some people may or may not disagree um, but i think they were where the star wars games hit their peak and then they kind of uh, tailed off a little bit we had things like the fourth unleashed which were okay like they weren't bad games but they were okay and we never had anything after that which was which kind of took the star wars universe by the scruff of the neck it was all kind of movie related stuff and honestly just a lot of rubbish games to be completely honest with you um came out and a, sh a shame i mean we had the lego games but i don't really count the lego games because they are what they are they're lego games okay with different skins they're not bad by any means i really enjoy playing the lego games but um you know they're not star wars games if you know what i mean um and uh yeah it, it, it just kind of tailed off and then there was this kind of big announcement when disney um brought star wars they were kind of like partnering with ea and we were going to see you know more star wars stuff and fantastic brilliant but um we haven't really seen anything or heard anything really we've had a battlefield game which by all accounts was beautiful to see but shallow as i've said and nothing since and it's almost criminal that we haven't had a great star wars kind of adventure game or rpg or uh flight sim um since then and i i can't understand it because those games are a license to print money everybody loves the star wars series you have so much lore and depth already there for you um to do and you know great stories and characters to explore and you know in a fantastic universe with you know these cool jedi and you know the dark and light side and all this kind of stuff and i don't know it's fascinating there was rumors um well there was a game that was cancelled called star wars 1313 which um you know you should look up because that looked stunning and it looked so good it was kind of like this gritty like smuggler underground kind of thing and it looked like it was going to be amazing but it got cancelled and uh that's really sad when that happens um especially with a game which looked so good like that and um yeah really sad so i really am hoping that this battlefield uh, single player campaign is going to be good um i worry because um i feel like this game is a multiplayer game which they've tacked on a single player campaign that might be doing a complete injustice i admit but where we've seen that in the past with games you get generally something like a call of duty campaign where it's going to be say 10 to 12 hours long um you know kind of fairly linear and um a lot of fun but ultimately you'll play it through have a great time and then be forgettable whereas you know kind of what i'm aching for is this kind of kotor experience of like sinking in um 60 70 plus hours and having this in-depth experience and i'd appreciate that's not what everybody wants and not everybody has time to, to play those games or do those things but um i feel like we haven't had one for so long in the star wars universe that we're just due you know we've had all those short experiences and i'd love it if we did admittedly if a, a good eight to ten hour campaign is done well that's a great story um i'll be in on it for sure and may even try out some of the multiplayer the campaign itself is apparently going to start from when the death star was destroyed the second death star um so um the end of uh, return of the jedi and will span 30 years to the current prequel that the current sequel trilogy that they're on kind of gets confusing doesn't it um and uh it's going to feature a female protagonist, um, which is cool. Um, I read a, uh, I was reading about it on IGN and I, I made the mistake of scrolling down to the comments section because you just know, like, it's full of, like, prepubescent teens who <laughs> are just not going to be happy with that. But um, 
there was a comment on there where someone said, uh, oh, I'm a massive Star Wars fan, and this looks great, but unfortunately I won't play it because the lead character is female and I can't relate to that. And I was just like, wow, that's... Uh... I mean, I feel sorry for the guy, really, um, on so many levels. Um, but the one thing I will say is that if this was five maybe more years ago maybe eight to nine years ago i would kind of understand that because female characters in video games weren't particularly well written they weren't very good they were very kind of one-dimensional um and it wasn't i don't think for me personally until maybe the last five years or so where they have started to um actually produce really good writing and i think that's because they brought in a lot of female writers as well um whereas before it was a very male dominated kind of thing and, and asking men to write a strong female character is very difficult um not impossible but very difficult i guess um and maybe also because the demographics of video gamers was more male um orientated whereas it's it's becoming um you know that well the female percentage is rising um and so you know there wasn't that much focus on it um, as a whole but um, I think with games like Tomb Raider um, Horizon we've seen recently we've seen really strong female protagonists even um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate which I, I really enjoy um, you see they're the two twins Jacob and Evie and in the past where a lot of games have had it where you can choose a male or female protagonist and generally they're pretty much the same Just take Mass Effect for example you can choose to have you know a male shepherd female shepherd um different voice acting the female shepherd is really good voice acting actually but generally not that different characters like pretty much exactly the same characters um as each other just one's male one's female um but i liked assassin creed syndicate because they were both very different uh the twins they had different skills to begin with but their um like attitude and their personalities were both quite different you had jacob who was a douchebag and you had evie who was the smart logical thinker of the two so um there was that but uh so i think like i'm very i, I have no problem with there being a female protagonist in this battlefield game in fact that actually i think is quite exciting um that we're going to see that um so yeah looking forward to it i think i just as i say i really hope that it's not just some tacked on single player campaign which because of the backlash they had from the first game you know they felt like they needed to put on and it's not going to be that good but they have said it's going to be canon story so i guess that means they've got to do it right because if they do it wrong then that's stuck with them isn't it really but um yeah i, I hope i hope it's good uh, obviously i think everybody hopes it's good but um the game looks nice um and we're going to see it this year so um if it is good then I'll, I'll be sure to check it out i think um in terms of the films as well um the last two films we've had rogue one and the force awakens have been amazing uh we had the last jedi this year which i think is going to be really good and massive again for those of you who don't know i work in a cinema and when the force awakens came out it was crazy um we had like nearly close to two thousand uh customers um for our midnight shows so you can't imagine is that's like two thousand people coming to watch a film at the same time which is really crazy um and the film was absolutely huge it was bonkers um and i hope this time as well it will be a good film and, and just as good because uh there's a lot of cool things which we're going to get to explore uh with the characters in there as well so it's good if you're not a fan of star wars i understand you're probably not even watching right now to be fair <laughs> but uh, uh i understand but you know it's it's a difficult one because i think most people the original trilogy is where they started and um you know those films are good so they're worth watching if, if anything else um now okay so second part of this i want to talk about is the is project scorpio they announced some specifications for that this is going to get a bit nerdy so bear with me on it um it was very interesting they didn't really go into a lot of detail but they kind of gave us some specs of what it's going to have you know eight gigabytes of ram it's going to have like a, i think it was eight core 2.3 megahertz processor 
um, and the, the effectiveness of it is it's going to be 40% more powerful than the PlayStation Pro, that's what they've said. Um, and it's going to be a 4K console. That's interesting for me. Um, I, 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 it's very interesting because I was looking at uh, the specs of it and the power of it, and I was looking at that and going, that can't do 4K. So how is this a 4K console? And in the demo they had um, Forza, I think, running 4K, 60 frames per second. Wow, amazing. Obviously, there's some caveats to that. It was a demo. Um, it was probably optimized to hell. Um, and also, the type of game it is means that um, you can more easily get a stable frame rate um you know and there's less kind of dynamic lighting particle effects etc etc which will really tank your system having said that you know forza is a, a beautiful looking game and to run it at 4k 60 frames per second is really good and if they manage to do that then that will make things very interesting because the playstation pro doesn't even run 4k at the minute it runs this kind of like upsampled um, kind of like what they call checkerboard effect and so it's not true 4k it looks really good don't get me wrong um, but if you're going for this is 4k this is you know it's not that so for the Scorpio to turn around and be like this is a 4k machine is very interesting now for those who perhaps don't know the Microsoft are losing this console generation badly to PlayStation 4 the Xbox One is not selling badly, but the PlayStation 4 is selling exceptionally well. So Microsoft have to do something to redress that balance. Um, where I feel they've lost out is not in power, but in games. PlayStation have had so many exclusives which have just knocked it out of the park. You know, Uncharted, uh, Bloodborne, uh, Last of Us... Um, Neo, for example, you know, just things like that, that, and there's, there's loads more, by the way, and Microsoft, you know, they've got Halo and, and Gears of War and stuff like that, but it's not enough, um, and I feel like Microsoft have lagged behind a bit, they were always behind from the beginning, if you remember that infamous press conference at E3, I think it was, where they just really dropped the ball, and yeah they, it was it was bad but i have brought it back a lot and they have made some great improvements to it and i would stand by the fact to say that the, the xbox one is a good console like it is not a bad console now um the xbox one s is a lot better a lot smaller a lot quieter um but it's good and i personally have never felt the need to buy an xbox one s because microsoft make all xbox one games available through their windows store on pc so there's just no point for me personally. I can just play it on my PC. Um, it, that's a strange decision, but one consumer very friendly, so I'm very happy about it. But like, if they did have some very strong exclusive games, then I would possibly be tempted to buy an Xbox One console. But on the other hand, maybe there's a lot of people who just wouldn't even touch it, and they're buying games through the Windows Store, like Forza Horizon 3, for example. Um, which is a great game, and uh, I wouldn't have brought an Xbox One S just for that game. But if there was a few more which were interesting, then maybe I would have considered it um, on there. Now, the Scorpio, and by the way, the one thing I will say is, I really wish they would commit to these names, because you've had like Project Morpheus, which was the PlayStation VR, Project Scorpio, you know, all these things sound really cool. Um, and then they release it, and it's just a generic number. So it'll be like the, the Xbox 2 <laughs> or the Xbox 4K, you know, or like, you know, so it's just PlayStation VR in the end. If you release something and call it uh, PlayStation Morpheus, I think you'd probably sell more. <laughs> People would just be like, that's a cool name. And if they release it as the Xbox Scorpio, I think people would really like that. Um, I certainly would. I'd, it might even make me buy it. You never know, but... Um, probably not but um, the interesting point with it is I was um, looking at the kind of appropriate power for it and um, I looked on to 
PC um, part picker, um, which is a cool website. So it lets you kind of like pick out parts, see what's compatible with each other if you're building your own PC. And I tried to go for something which was equivalent to the specs they had kind of released for Scorpio. Um, so I'll we'll cut to the picture of what I did with that and uh, kind of bring that up. So what I felt like was kind of equivalent to it was uh, the AMD Ryzen 5. Um, now, I think the Xbox is only 2.3 gigahertz. This Ryzen is 3.2 gigahertz speed, so a lot faster, but um, there's a caveat to that. Um, just a kind of bog standard cooler, um, average kind of um, motherboard as well. Um, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. I think they're saying that it might have DDR5 RAM on the, um, might just be the graphics card though. I don't know for sure on that one. Um, an SSD and your kind of normal internal hard drive. And then for the graphics, people are saying that an RX 480 eight gigabyte is roughly equivalent to the processing power of the Xbox. The um, Xbox Scorpio um, has what's called like integrated graphics on chip. So it doesn't have like a separate graphics card like a PC does. It's all built in one. Um, there are advantages to that in that when you have this dedicated chip for everything, um, everything's going to be working together a bit better. Um, I'll explain more about that in a minute. And then just, you know, a case and power supply and, and the other killer being Windows that you have to buy. And all in all, that came to £813, which is a lot of money for a PC. And the other caveat to that is that won't do 4K. So this, like... Uh, PC that I've built won't run 4K. It might run 2K, um, fairly okay. Definitely run 1080p on pretty much max settings, um, pretty well. Um, but it won't run 4K. Now, the difference with that is, um, if you imagine that you have two cars which are the same, say you have two Audis, okay, and they're both kind of like 2.5 liter engines, but one of them is tuned by a you know, a, a racing mechanic, um, that car will go faster. It will get them more out of those, of everything that it has, whether it's, you know, the engine or, you know, just the power, everything about it. Imagine they strip out all the other the seats at the back, you know, lighten it up, um, you know, and, you know, put on some slick tires or something like that. And then, you know, effectively they're the same cars. They have pretty much the same engine, but one of them has been tuned. That car will annihilate the other car because of the way it has been tuned and that's kind of the way the console works so the Xbox Scorpio could potentially run 4k because it is tuned that way and if its software is optimized to that point it could work now gaming PCs have one downside to consoles and that is Windows Windows 10 is not really a um, gaming platform it, uh, it I mean it isn't primarily there for gaming you know it's there for work you know you can do all sorts of things on it that's the advantage you have you know if the xbox was to come out and it was 800 pounds and you've got this pc desktop for 800 pounds you'd probably go for the pc because it would do so much more you know you can surf the internet watch movies on it you, i mean you could probably do it on the xbox but you know what i mean it's more optimized you know you can do all your work on it um you can run other programs on there you can do like video editing software, that type of thing, you know, uh, music programs, so much more you can do on a PC, obviously, it's not there. But the Scorpio probably won't come in at 800 pounds. I would imagine it would come in around about 500. I think if they went higher, it would be very dangerous. Um, so they're gonna be taking a loss on that, I think, big time. Most console manufacturers take a loss on any console they make because they make money back on the games they sell. Um, but this Scorpio, like, I mean, it's tough. I mean, you're looking at that um, list and it's 800 pounds now, sure, if you, by the time the Scorpio comes out at the end of the year, those components would have gone down in price. Um, you could argue that with Black Friday, you could probably knock off 100 to 150 pounds um, on that if you went to some deals. So then you'd be looking at about 650-ish. Um, which is a lot more reasonable. And then you're comparing that to the Xbox, which is 500. It, I'm talking, it's not confirmed at 500. It could be more, it could be less. I don't know. I wouldn't imagine it'd be less. Um, 
and then with a more optimized xbox you could say that's kind of roughly equivalent um so it is interesting that uh you know the way it's going to work just to as a, a kind of a, a caveat of this i'll show you another picture which is um basically my pc as it's set up and that comes to as you can see way more if i was to buy other components nowadays um it's not quite exactly what i've got but it's pretty much similar and that wouldn't run 4k 60 frames per second on um you know a really intensive game like uh, uh trying to think what's come out um say something like a battle battlefield or um I'm trying to think maybe like a fallout 4 or probably i'm trying to think what else i play that's looks good i can't remember but yeah, basically like a real big AAA game probably wouldn't run, in fact, it definitely wouldn't run 4K 60 frames per second on that. But if Microsoft optimized their software and they optimized their hardware a lot and they put all sorts of trickery in it, then they could get close. But I'd be very surprised if we saw 4K 60 frames per second on all their games. I just can't see it happening. Um, unless they are taking one hell of a hit and <laughs> on their like hardware um it, it, it it's i mean i find this sort of thing fascinating I, you guys may not but um i'm just really intrigued to see where that's going will i get one no not really because as i say i can get all the games on pc anyway they haven't said they're not going to do that so um i believe that i'll be able to, to to pick them up on um uh the, the windows store on pc by the way the windows store on pc is the worst store front on in history but if you can only get a game there then that's what you have to do i've only ever brought horizon 3 on there so because it is nowhere else but um if you have a choice shop elsewhere <laughs> uh, shop on steam or gog basically um so yeah so that's my kind of like i guess like just a quick rundown of the the scorpio and what it can do i think um the one exception which you you may find is the graphics may be more powerful than the rx480 we won't really know until we try it out some people have said it, it could be as powerful as like a 1070 um in, uh, nvidia 1070 which would mean you would add on about another 100 pounds to that price so yeah we'll see i guess um if this console comes out below 500 pounds i'll be shocked and that's and that's 500 pounds by the way so you're looking at 650 dollars 650 dollars something like that that's really expensive so i don't know we'll see we'll see how it does but microsoft have to pull something out of the bag so it could be they take a hefty price cut and go like below 500 uh, but i can't see it myself personally but i'm prepared to be wrong but thank you for watching this as always it's been my pleasure and i will see you next time.